not to get the cheap baskets. Five of nine as a team. Spartans from the line. We're talking about a team that shoots 72% on the year, Jim. So way off their average. The timeout has been called. Is so uh, frustrated. His team has never led. But it's a tight one for the first half. The Chevy truck's eye vision. Jim, what we're going to see is this tight zone defense by Arizona. Marcus Taylor, who's done a terrific job. Here we see him splitting that zone double team out front. Here you'll see it from the backside. He sees his opening, goes inside. He's having a terrific first half. Eight points. He's three for six. A tremendous lift off that bench by the freshman. They've needed it from the backcourt because the two starters, Richardson and Bell, have not hit a shot from the field. They average 29 a game between them. And they have so far today one point. A free throw by Richardson. And they stay in the matchup zone. Right over the top of it to Woods. Woods off balance. What a shot going the other way. That team is so small out there right now that Arizona, and this may sound crazy, but can throw right over the top of the zone, get the ball to Woods anytime, and he can deliver from there, either with his shot or with the pass. Team may be too small to play zone against Arizona. Good job realizing Taylor's having a hot hand. He's really playing him hard. Richardson gets it to the corner. Bell's three. Richardson tip twice. Yes, the second time. There are those offensive rebounds, Jim, that Michigan State is incredible. And as I said, almost half of the shots they missed this year, they get the rebound. It's tough to beat a team that can do that. That was Lute Olson's biggest concern when we met with him yesterday morning. See, they don't want to give them extra possessions. Good move here by Tom Izzo to go back to the man-to-man -man with his smaller team on the floor. Away from the ball, there's a whistle on Taylor, and it'll be a one-on-one. -on -one. Coming up, singular at the half, and join Greg and Clark and Bill Wolf for first half high. Need all this information we've been reading over the last few days. I wonder how many Mr. Basketballs are in this final four. <laughs> it just seems like every state is being represented. He'll get one more, but this is now coming up. Frazier returns the third free throw attempt of the game for Arizona. This after 56 attempts against Illinois. New record. 43, also NCAA all-time tournament record. Well, there's a difference between the aggressive play of Michigan State and Illinois. Illinois goes to bang it. I think in, in, in the physicalness of Michigan State, they really don't play for the foul, to wear down and to give up, let's say, at the center position, 15 fouls. Six uh, fighting Illini expelled from the game for too many fouls. It That's a little strong eight. expel, James. I mean, <laughs> they, they were about, playing defense. They got caught. How about six, six going up? That's a little strong. Man. They were down to... Just a few players left. Seems like every time Michigan State gets within one, Arizona can figure out a way to keep that lead going. Hudson with that basket, his first two of the game. Inside and blocked. Good job, Ballinger. Ballinger holds on to it, draws the foul. Now see, Frazier cannot make the same move there that Arenas would have made. Arenas would have been another foot higher and been able to deliver that basket. Game two will be Duke and Maryland for the fourth time and all three of their games have been memorable that's putting it mildly understating it well Jim you have Duke in a situation where they've won two of the three but when you look at the stats for the whole field of the three Maryland has had the advantage Ballinger also fails on the front end of a one and one and who would have ever expected in that particular case the one win that Maryland had was at Duke for the second straight yep. year on what was senior day Nate James and Shane Battier's final appearance at Cameron, a loss to Maryland. Nice crossover with Jefferson going up against Bell. Good Who's rebound. Quick enough to stay with him on that move. Jefferson missing the shot. Richardson's timeout. pulling it down. We got a timeout. Tom Izzo wants a good play to get the lead finally. Minute six to go. First half. Tenth time in NCAA history, two teams from the same conference meet in the final four and the last time two ACC teams met in the final four 1981 80. Virginia North Carolina yep they met in the same day as today matter of fact the day that uh, President Reagan oh, the, the day before right let's see President Reagan was shot the, the on Monday so that was, on, that was the, that was this the Saturday 
That was a Ralph Sampson. One minute. Al Woods had the great game. One minute to go in the half. It's been a good one. Biggest lead for Arizona, five. Never trailed in this game let's, at this point. Let's see the set play. Probably trying to get Richardson that, open, that and he faked it. out Hudson. No, it really was, Jim. He Hudson got faked out. If Richardson would have held his ground, he would have been open under the basket. Missed and, by a wide mark, though. Yeah, it really did, and you can see that Tom Izzo really upset with that because if Jason Richardson had not faked out his teammate, he'd had a basket. How will they use the clock here with an 11-second differential? I yep. think you want to go down, take the quick shot, and get two possessions, but they don't do that, so they will give Michigan State at least one chance. Solid screen by Lauren Woods, looking for the screen and roll. Jefferson, he's blocked this time. Oh, they see a piece of the hand, Richardson. Isn't it amazing? We have two of the great leapers in college basketball going head to head, and neither one of them worries about a defender going up with him on the jump. Now watch this. Look at how quickly Richardson got up there. Now, Jefferson normally would say, there's gonna be nobody within a foot of me on that jump shot. Two shots. His parents are here, Richard's parents, and they drove to the first two weeks to Kansas City and San Antonio flew here but they're non-denominational Christian missionaries his mother and father all over the world Kenya Tanzania Great Britain throughout Europe you know in one of the the tough losses they had after winning out there in Maui flew all the way to play against Purdue and in that game Jefferson was 0 for 6 did not score and it was one of the big losses that started the tailspin for Arizona early in the year. Two to tie at the half, a three for the lead at the intermission. With seven seconds to go, Taylor manned up. Somebody open. Bell steps in with three, blocked by Woods. Jefferson looks up, he'll launch it. Good half. Excellent half. Arizona never trailed, never led though by more than five. Gardner's 13 points, leading the way. Group for the Spartans hit only five of 19 in the first half. Anyaganya back in the game. Wright wants it. This is the most aggressive I've seen Wright in this game. And look at him score his first field goal since the Sweet 16. I tell you, he looked in the mirror, Jim, at halftime, or somebody talked to him. That's the first time I've seen him really post up aggressively. A good a game and a half without a field goal. Richards, a beautiful move. Couldn't finish it. Back out the bell. And there again, getting a rebound on a missed shot. The key to this team's success. Hudson, jam. Tipped out, Bell. Stuck, tries to go inside, and in there is Gardner. Up ahead, Jefferson. Richardson defending. Oh, come up short. Charlie, Charlie Bell, really lucky and making mistakes that you'd never see out of this senior. Gardner steps in on the pass to Thomas with the steal right back. Woods outside, jumper. He's, he's got that jump shot. Boy, I'll tell you. When you get a seven-footer that can step out, make that jump shot, he's always open for a passing lane. Charlie Bell, Jim, did something I haven't seen from him in a long time. Took a shot, stood and watched it, and he was lucky that Arizona didn't get a wide-open break. Again, Richardson misfiring from the outside and a push. I think if you're Tom Izzo, you better call a quick timeout here in the second half. His team is not in sync. Look at Wright moving his, his feet. Power, that's the Michael Wright. That's an all Pac-10 first-teamer. And he hasn't been seen on this squad for the last two games. Believe me, that's the player he is, not what we've been looking at. That shot, a challenge. Anna Gagne, who just a moment ago at the other end, collected his third foul. Well, Randolph will be in quickly, except Jim, he's got three. Remember that cheap one he picked up on the defensive baseline? Ooh, underneath. Anna Gagne is in there. They're going to call him again? Yes, his wow. fourth. Now Randolph's gonna have to come in, and Tom Izzo, at a position he would like to be a little deeper, has got a real problem. He's got his two power players that Wright would be having guard in, in, in real foul trouble. Anagania four, Randolph with three. He would have liked to get about six, eight minutes out of Anagania before coming in with Randolph. Jefferson, three-pointer, and Arizona has its largest lead of the game. Jefferson chases it down, out battles the two Spartans. I don't think Tom 
Izzo can wait any longer before he calls a timeout. His team really comes out in the second half totally out of sync. Totally uh, outplayed here, and it's about to be double digits if the Cats score on this trip. Great move by Wright. Told Jefferson to clear out so he can have the ball. Ball is up his own jumper. Inside, lays it in. Michigan State has got to call a timeout to slow this game down. They're going to. They turned it over three straight trips. Woods. Nice out. Yep. Taylor's in, and he comes away with it. See if Taylor can settle this team down and offensively get something started again. We'll see if they can get a trip with it, at least get a shot off. They've turned it over for the last four. The ball in Taylor's hands. He can make some things happen with some dribble penetration. Inside Hudson on the blocks. Not ready to score. Randolph tries to follow it up. And out it goes to Gardner. They've got some numbers if they all converge. And to the line for a three-point opportunity. Gardner stronger than is Taylor, and he knew it. And so it's almost like a guy in a post that thinks, hey, you know what, I'm too strong for you. He goes right through Taylor. Taylor, no chance to handle it. This is a very, very critical time in this game right here for Michigan State because the flow of the game is all Arizona, and they've got to figure out a way to score. Three-point play, 14-point lead. Arizona, 12-0. Start to the second half. There, I really thought that Bell and, and uh, Richardson both didn't even try to challenge him. Now, he had a big step well, on him, but they just backed off. And you got a guy that can really flush the basket. And we'll see him. See, he's hanging on the rim. There's nobody there. Good call by the official. Another one. Richardson this oh. time, nope, he won't get there either. Again, you have guys that can finish in Jefferson and Arenas, and even though Richardson's a great shot blocker, he's not going to get to that one. It's amazing to see Michigan State, a team normally great with the basketball, turning it over time after time. And the lead is 17, Hudson with two, and Arenas is hurt. Holding his arms above his head. Looks like he just stretched something. What if it was on the dunk? That field goal by Hudson breaks a drought of almost seven minutes without a field goal. Thursday on CBS, a reminder. Find out why more than 20 million viewers a week already know that CSI is the hottest new show on television. Don't miss it after Survivor Thursdays on CBS. You know, Arenas may have stretched himself on that dunk. Wincing over there in a lot of pain right in the back of his neck. Luke Walton in. Right, calling for it, demanding it, and finishing it off. And what made the play is Lauren Woods at 7 1 has the perfect angle to throw that lob inside. Nice look. Taylor got it there. Woods rejects. Second block of the game. Randolph on the floor. And a tie up arrow is Michigan State. Here, now watch this. He goes up. And just a weird strain on his part. He runs back down the floor. Seems unnatural at this point, and all of a sudden it seems to hit him. It's kind of like that uh, Dunleavy play. Remember we had down in uh, in Philadelphia where the, he just had that stinger. Bell with a three. Just can't find it today. Charlie Bell having the nightmare game of his life. Dunleavy's though was he was hammered. Yeah, he that was. One, in this one there was no no contact. Well, just maybe an odd position for the arms. Woods showing some moves, too strong. Tipped up, Jefferson keeps it alive. But Jefferson has really been the secret. Oh, what a sweet stroke for a three. He has been the secret. He's athletic enough to take. The Cats have just blown this wide open. 53-33. His athleticism has taken Michigan State out of the game on both ends of the floor. Wow, what a screen by Hudson. Walton even deflects it. Every pass challenged. Bell steps in. Two converge. Back out Taylor with the three. Thomas waits. But 
You know, it seems like every time Michigan State scores, Jim, it's by accident almost. It doesn't seem to be within the flow of the game. But just a very proud team. You talk about a defending national champion. It's a little bit of a misnomer in college ball. With, with not the cast of characters, yeah, you lose right? three starters. Yeah, you lose three not starters. Exactly the same roster. Exactly. Trying, though, they were to duplicate Duke's feat of championships, Indianapolis, Minneapolis, back to back. And there's Wright with a jumper. And this is uh, certainly becoming a his half has said all wrong in the first half. He's getting back to being all right again. Good fake, but look at how good Jefferson recovers. Thomas got to be ready to shoot that ball of the catch. The whole offense is inside the three-point line. Just like a foot or two yep. inside the... Well, you know, you talk about the three guys, Granger, Peterson, and Cleves represented 46% of that national championship points last year. So it's not like you just replaced them automatically. And a lot of things that won't show up in the stats, too, they represent it. Out comes Bell. The last stone. The Flint man gives it up, and Hudson converts. Tom is a wanting full court pressure now. Trying to guide this team back into the ball game. Probably not a bad time for Lute Olsen to give Lauren Woods a rest. He's got a nice working margin here. Save Woods to be fresh the last 10 minutes. Walton outside. Gardner three. Back of the rim. Bell, he wants to run with it. Gardner coming in on him. Boy, Woods thought he had that time, but he didn't take in consideration how well Charlie can get up in the air. Luke says, hold on, let's take a time out here. We've given up six unanswered. Arena's still trying to stretch it out. Double, double, triple. Boy, I'll tell you, for young players watching, don't commit in the air. The under 12 timeout. We'll be right back. Comeback win this year, 13 points. Comeback win against Penn State, a team that later knocked them out of the Big Ten tournament in the quarterfinals. The gritty Penn State team that made the Sweet 16 in this event. Here we'll see the injury coming right up here. See that bang? And then he goes down and extended himself for the dunk. And that could be a very serious problem, not only for this game, but if Arizona were to advance, they have got to have Arenas help. Hudson, ooh, slides off the front of the rim, but he'll shoot a pair. Nice offensive set by Michigan State. It looks like they like Hudson posting up and sealing inside. And as soon as Lute Olsen sees that, he's coming back with Lauren Woods. He doesn't want to go ahead and take away from this nice working margin he has. Two for Hudson, who along with Charlie Bell and Quinn Buckner are the only three to ever start for a Big Ten champion four years. Woods back on the floor. Well, Wessel. Jim, these seniors that are on this floor for Michigan State are the winningest over a three-year period of any players that have ever played in the Big Ten. So that is quite an accomplishment. Four four championships. Big Ten championships, an NCAA championship, three Final Fours. I mean, you go on and on. I mean, this become legendary proportions for these guys. And don't give up on them yet. They're on an eight-point run here to slice it to 12. Anderson doesn't want that shot. Randolph realizes it backs off. Smart move on his part. Jefferson cuts in and has it taken right away. Hudson, but this time the arrow's Arizona's way. You see a little change now all of a sudden. It seems like Michigan State has calmed down a little bit. They got in a panic mode as they got bl blown out primarily by throwing the ball away. Not any lack of intensity in their part. Just bad decision making. They had those four straight trips where they turned it over. And if I were Arizona, I'd get that ball to Lauren Woods. With Randolph on it. Walton drives. Too strong with the shot. Out it goes and off the fingertips of Woods. Good hustle by Richardson. And right now we see Arizona, and, and one of the reasons also that they've got some problems, Arenas is out of the ball game, takes away their primary shooter to extend the defense. Michael Wright, though, will come back for Edgerson. And Lute Olsen, he just staying on top of this game, just doing a great job. He realizes with Arenas out, he cannot afford to not have another scorer in the game. So he comes back with Wright. Now Walton becomes a primary passer. They go back to their zone. One, two, two. Chappelle 
is in for the Spartans. Oh, pass um, totally over the head of Richardson. Test your knowledge of tournament trivia and participate in live polls through this interactive telecast available on Ultimate TV. That's the second time they've miscommunicated. Jeff, let me explain something about Michigan State. They had 132 more assists than turnovers on the year. We are seeing a Michigan State team that Tom Izzo's probably saying, who are they out there? The seven in this half, and here's one the other way. Traveling. Arizona being very impatient with this nice work in margin. And now a critical play, I think, in possession for Michigan State. Mm -hmm. Try to get it down to single digits if possible. Need a three to do that, but they have taken a 20-point deficit and have a chance to maybe even cut it in half right here very quickly. Nice pass. And does it back with that shot. Now we see a little ebb and flow, and as I pointed out last year, they were the national champs, but they came back in every game. Got it to 10, right at the 10-minute mark. Gardner on Bell and almost taken away by Chappelle. Jefferson gets it to go and Arenas is coming back. Jefferson has been the factor in this game on both ends of the floor that Michigan State has not had an answer for. Randolph between two defenders and going to the line for a three-point try. You're seeing a lot of championship caliber coming out. Jim, we talked about this being a great Final Four and that's because all of these teams know how to win. The freshman again, doing the job inside with that big wide body. Jefferson got a fingertip on it. That's the second foul on Woods and Randolph coming through big here at the final four, the freshman. And how about Randolph shouting at his teammates just like he's the backcourt leader. It's Mateen Cleaves all over again. And there's the single digit deficit goal you spoke of. Side Woods, power move, taken away. Wright is there, and he's going to the line. Huge play by Wright because Woods had no business going in there with his head down. Loose ball, and Michigan State just can't get their hands on it. Michael Wright with all 10 of his points in this half, starting with this move. Now, somebody talked to this young man himself, and knowing the way he likes to play, it was probably Michael Wright talking to himself in the mirror because he has come out this second half and shown us why he's of All-American caliber. Second team All-America this year and raised right there in Big Ten country in Chicago. Coming to life with 11 and a half. And Arenas is back on the floor. Back on the floor, they stay in the zone. So they're back out there on the floor for the first time, Jim, in a long time with the original starting lineup is Arizona. Randolph trying to seal inside. And again, they go in the air to throw the ball away. In Arizona, everyone was breaking on that near steal. Tough shot, Taylor. Oh. Tipped up, Arenas almost tipped it in again the other way. Boy, and you talk about extending when you had a problem with the back of your neck. That was a terrific rebound on his part. It'll be Arizona ball. Thomas is back in. Looks like Tom Izzo wants his team to pick up full court. Charlie Bell is doing that, but it makes no sense for one man to press and the other guys to go on the other end of the floor because Walt will come down here and just be the outlet pass, so no pressure available. Yeah, they're all staying back. Yeah. Gardner can get a solid screen, but Woods doesn't need it. And a man. Right one more. Trying to make the move. And Bell. Got some numbers here. Kicks it out quickly. Now we see Michigan State wanting to push that ball. Good decision by Taylor. Randolph is a man child in there, isn't he? Takes a shot over Woods. Rebound Bell. Tipped up by who else? Randolph. Randolph. He is verbalizing, energizing, and doing a job that Look at him shouting at his teammates. Love to see that out of a young player. This game has all of a sudden gotten serious again. Arenas. Well, not 
showing any signs of that. Would look like a pinched nerve earlier. Jim, watch Zach Randolph in here. Just wide body, soft hands. He's got that incredible combination of guys that have the wide bodies and soft hands. Lute Olsen grimacing, just not there. You know, I saw a stat that I could not believe. You know, Lute Olsen could be, if he wins this national championship, the oldest to ever win a, ever win a national championship as a coach.